in front lines recently, despite being purchased for a mere 850 Euro. Wow. Your parents will be mad at love this one. This, they love yeah. their horses. Carlo trained horse Hewick scooped an incredible 160,000 euro top prize when he emerged victorious at the American Not Grand bad National. Return. Is it Derek is joined now by the Hewick's trainer, John Hanlon? Derek, take it away. Yes, good morning, guys. We're down here in the winning yard of the trainer of the American Grand National, John Sharkhan. Good morning to you. Good morning. <laughs> Congratulations. How are good, good morning. How are you, John? We're tired, but we're great. <laughs> now, you've just stepped uh, off the plane for JFK. Yeah, just home. So, uh, we were home yesterday, but the difference in hours and everything, I'd, I'd kill you, so it would. Bit but, of jet lag. but you came out with a cup of tea just this morning, when, so... <laughs> when, you have this, when you have this to come to... You have this you now. Have this this is come. the trophy. This is the all-important trophy. That's the trophy. American one. That's the, the Galway one. That's the Bet365, the Dominant Nation. So, and, and list all races as well, the horse. Races, so yeah. let's go back to the beginning, John. Yes. Uh, the horse. You bought him for just over 800 quid. I bought him for 800 quid, about three miles down the road here. Yeah. Uh, down in Gorsebridge in the, in the Martin Donahue's auction. And, uh, and did you know at the time his pedigree? Definitely didn't know, but he was a nice horse and he walked well. And that's all. When you're buying young horses like that, you have to go by your own judgment. Okay, and now how many horses have you here in the yard? About 60. Okay, so from there anyway, you said, right, we'll enter the Grand National. Why did you decide to enter the American Grand National? Well, he was after winning the bet 365. He won the Galway Plate. He probably should have won in this door. He was unlucky, he fell. Yeah. And um, this, the ground was beginning to go in Ireland. He wants good ground. So we said, we'll stick him in and see what happens. And he came home out of this door well after his little blunder. And I said, here we go. Listen, it's a dream. It's something that you dream about when you're maybe 16 years of age, that someday you'll have a horse for the American... I, I, the American Grand National is something that we're looking at for years. I, and you never think you'll have a horse for And we're for looking at that. shots from there on air. Like, he took the, the last bend fairly quick, and there was a good bit of pace him towards the end, wasn't there? The war, yeah. He flew after jumping the last... After jumping the last fence, he just took off. But we knew that because in the bet 365, it was 3 mile 5, and that was only 2 mile 5. So we knew we were always going to be able to stay. The Americans thought they had us beaten now. They really thought yeah. that two horses in the race and said, there's no way that we were going to be. But we had different things in our mind. You had different things in your mind. And of course, what I loved about it as well is that you dedicated the, the win to ja Jack de Bromhead. Ah, yeah, listen, Jack was a lovely kid, so he was. And Paddy was very friendly with him. And um, he's always in the back of our mind. And lads, it's going to be always in the back of our mind. Jack will always be there. Absolutely. He was here, he rode out in this yard. Um, his pony and um, this is just great. And you've your own two lads that ride out as well. That's Paddy. Uh, Paddy and TJ, of course, congratulations, Thank you TJ. Very much. You were the winning owner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, in, you're in your early 30s, you've been winning Grand National. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's surreal now at the moment, but um, hopefully it'll sink in in the next few days when we get a bit of sleep, please God. <laughs> Hewitt, the name, of Hewitt. course, you, Hewitt, you, yeah. went, you went to the horse, but he wasn't Hewitt when he entered him. No, Rachel's partner tried to name him after a place in Scotland. It's actually called Hayek. Now, don't ask me how to spell it. I haven't a clue, but um, there was a mix-up with the spelling, but we said we'd just stick with Hewitt then. So Jack said it'd be good luck to stick with it. And, and good luck to stay with him. And yeah. where, where now to for the horse? Uh, back home to me when he gets back home in about 10 days and he'll get his well-deserved break. Um, and then he come back into Sharks probably December, early January, um, and aim for the Gold Cup in Cheltenham. Aim for the Gold Cup in Cheltenham, and that's what you've got your, your sights set on now, Jim. Well, the sights set on, on Cheltenham Gold Cup, like it's everyone's dream, everyone's dream. So uh, we're hoping our dream won't stop. But listen, what the horses have to do for us this year and do for the yard here, the staff, you see here this morning, all the staff going out to ride out horses there at seven, half seven in the morning in the cold of the morning. It doesn't make any difference if the sun is shining, if it's spilling rain, if it's snow, all the horses have to be, walk, have to be rid out. So um, they have to rid out every day. They're there this morning to do it again. And it's great credit to my staff here for what they're after doing. And we were gone for the last week that they were there and they kept the show going. And of course, Rachel Blackmore as well. Get yeah, Rachel break. started here with us she started here in this barn we hadn't much more than this barn at that time yeah. and um, so she's after being a great show for us she, she kept us going the whole time along and now we have a horse to keep us going so it's mighty it's not great they'll be all calling to your yard now there'll be no shopping even. Well, well, there, was a, there was a lot of neighbours here yesterday yes, and the day before yes. and they were cheering and everything and I was down 
I went down last night down to the local pub for a half an hour and there was a big cheer when we went in and brother he was in he was in um, Town, so he was the night before and he said they nearly knocked down the place so. nearly <laughs> <laughs> which is great so there we have it and of course you've win a greyhound as well that's correct yeah we were lucky enough to win an Irish greyhound derby this year something that would have been dreamed of as well there was always greyhounds and and well, it was actually greyhounds before there was horses, horses in this yeah. family, yeah. So you're going to so, parade the two of them down the Greyhound Stadium? Yeah, well, listen, we, we said, we, uh, they asked me the other night, would we bring the horse into Kenny into the Greyhound track? And I said, so bring on the two, bring, bring on the Greyhound, and uh, we'll make a night of it. <laughs> make a night, and i say you'll bring half a Carlo with you as well. So there we have a Carlo's on the map, the small stables are on the Kenny map as well. Kill Kenny, map. you're on the border. Back to you guys in the studio. Well done, congratulations. <laughs> Very much, Derek. Uh, sure, he's not called the shark for nothing, John Hanlon. I mean, he's a big trainer. And I, I would have met him at a few kind of Cheltenham preview nights. Oh, would you? Gentle of a man, gentleman, yeah, he is. It's just, so, first of all, the horse as well did a, a huge amount of the work and everything. But well, I just... 850 But this euros. is the thing. The person that sold the horse to John going, what's... What's John Hanlon noticing in this he's horse? He's got a good that walk, I, that, that horse. I'm not, seeing, that I'm not seeing. And John's like, no, no, he's just going to, he's coming up as a playmate. Do you know, he's got every, 